answering questions from the comment section. Although some of the questions are from places such as Instagram, LinkedIn, no Twitter. That's what we're gonna be doing today in this video. A lot of the questions that I get are from my most viewed video, which is about email development, which is great and it's awesome. And I appreciate everyone that has watched the video and enjoyed it. I'm no longer on this career path and I think that at, at some point, I'm probably not gonna be the best person to ask questions about email development as the industry changes, as things change. It puts me further away from that niche and it's not something I'm gonna pursue in the future. But in this video, I'm actually gonna be answering a lot of the questions that I get about email development as well as providing some resources. The resources that I mentioned here in this video about email development are the resources I'm gonna respond with going forward. But of course, still happy to answer questions about my experience as an email developer. I left my role as an email developer September 2021, so whenever you're watching this video, you can kind of do the math. <laughs> so anyway, um, I've already given a response directly to each commenter, but I figured a video would help with others who may have the same question, and it also allows me to add more to the answer. All right, so the first question is from James Baker. Hey, great video. Are you a self-taught developer? If so, which courses did you find useful? Yes and no. Web development started as a hobby when I was in high school. I wasn't sure if I wanted to pursue it as a career back then because I had other interests, you know, being younger. And I actually made a video about this too. I have several videos that talked about kind of my journey here and I'll put them in the description. Later on I did decide to pursue an associate degree in computer programming technology but even then I was kind of just sitting on my degree and um, then fast forward to 2019 I enrolled in coding boot camp which was Lambda School at the time. Now I'm just kind of getting real world experience. So I guess to answer your question, it started self-taught, but with taking it seriously later on, um, I did get more of a formal structured education through an associate's degree and through boot camp. But as far as sources that I used to learn, when I was self-teaching in high school, I was learning a lot of different ways, but it was mostly from other people. I was a teenager running a Disney website for one of my favorite Disney stars and I would meet other people who were also interested in web development. They were building websites, other teenagers, and I would pick up stuff from them. They would help me. Back then it wasn't formal, it was just picking up stuff along the way. I've kind of been in this game of networking for years, meeting people online, learning from people online, even before it was popular. How can I make a resume without experience? So I actually made a video about this, software developer resume, no experience, you can check that out. I'll probably be making more content surrounded in these topics, like resumes, things like that, just to kind of update and refresh my content a little bit with things I've learned since then. Darlvin says, do you have any document notes that you can leave a link into it? Yes, I actually did a video on that as well. So my notes are in Google Drive. I use Google Docs mainly to take notes. I'll leave a link to that as well in the description. Recently, I actually started completely from scratch with my coding notes because um, I had like way more. I had front end stuff, back end stuff, just tons of stuff but it was too cluttered and I just wanted to start over so right now it's just HTML CSS stuff actually it's just a lot cleaner because I have stuff in there now that I feel is actually important versus putting a bunch of notes that I have to sift through now it's just more organized but as I learn more I'll put more in there more topics in there and it'll be based on my real world experience versus just my classroom kind of notes. This is from Instagram. Question, I'm a self-taught coder, developer, and learning JavaScript. What would you recommend for next language to learn for 2022? Oh, and how do you balance editing videos along with learning or working? I also create YouTube videos but feel overwhelmed at times. Should I stop either one? As far as what I recommend learning, um, I pretty much just learn what I need for work. Um, outside of that, I focus on what I'm interested in. I don't wanna you know, make a recommendation for that because it's based on you and what, what you wanna do. I think you know, ultimately it's what you're interested in. As your career grows, you, you may wanna 
focus more on stuff that you actually like but that's me so that's what I would do as far as YouTube videos it used to be overwhelming to me too until I simplified my process so I basically just keep a list of topics um, that I want to talk about and um, I write out talking points for each topic and I record when I can and I edit when I can my process changes according to my life so because I work full-time 40 plus hours a week the only thing I really do during the week is just keep a backlog like if I think of a topic just jot it down sometimes during the week I can write out my talking points too because it doesn't take too much work on that it's just this is what I want to talk about what do I want to cover during that and that's not too too hard this video may have taken you know a little bit more thought because I answered the questions in my notes so that when I get on camera I know what I'm gonna say I don't want to sit here like twiddling my thumbs I already have an outline in front of me of how I'm gonna answer your question recording is really not a lot of work either but I prefer to do it on weekends when I'm fresh and I don't have to worry about going to work the next day it does take mental power to even record from Instagram what's your name and where are you from so for starters my name is definitely on my profile but since you asked my name is Spongebob and I'm from Bikini Bottom hi Jashelle thanks for your reply currently I'm working as a front-end developer using react Redux, etc., but I'm more likely interested in front end design. Could you please guide me how to search web design roles? Means what are the specific web design related roles that I can search over the internet? Thanks. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what I do for this. There's a couple of things I'll do for something like this Indeed or Google.com. And for this example, I'll just use Google. So if you're looking for roles in web design, I may type in something like job titles for web designers. Web designer, front end developer, UI designer, UX designer, interaction designer, art director, web developer, full stack. That article's from 2013. So we can maybe look at something a little bit more recent. So maybe something from the past year. And pretty much the same thing. You're looking at web designer, graphic designer, full stack, front end, back end. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna come to this website that I actually sent sent to this person. Um, with a quick search, I was able to find um, seven different roles that kind of align with that. So again, front end developer, web, web designer, full stack developer, WordPress, Shopify developer, web analyst, UX, UI, technical consultant. Indeed, and so you see here I have a web designer. It'll show you different kinds of roles within that. So it deals a lot with graphics and design, things like that. Pretty much a lot of it is just, you know, a matter of going to a job search website or Google. And here's one that says top 10 in-demand design jobs in 2022. So you got product designer, front end web developer, digital designer, UX, UI, motion graphics, graphic designer, art director, animation designer. A lot of times you can just, just simple searches like that. And as you can see, I mean, I'm Googling myself, so <laughs> that's really, you know, it's just a lot of research involved to find if you're looking for something specific. So the next question is from Panda Pete. Can you share with us why you got out of your email dev job? What part about the job did you not like the most? Thanks. Pretty much normal reasons, career growth, more money, better opportunities, 100% remote work, a company that better aligns with my values as an employee, you know, standard stuff. While coding in HTML tables all day can be a great start and get you some good experience, um, definitely I wanted to go ahead and just keep my career moving um, and that's all, that's pretty much what it is. I also like to be able to do different things, use my skills in multiple different ways. But again, I did want a company that better aligned with my values and also I, I really prefer working fully remote. So that's what I got now. <laughs> F says, I'm currently in a boot camp and thinking of going into email development after. I don't have a degree. Do you think the boot camp alone is enough education wise to get an HTML email development job? And do you think email development is a good entry level job? As far as not having a degree and just going to boot camp, is that enough? 
For some companies, yes, but for some companies, no. Different companies have different requirements. I do think email development is a good entry-level job, but it's not the only one. There are lots of different types of entry-level jobs, so you don't have to necessarily focus solely on email development because, again, it's a niche skill. It's a niche thing, so I think that if you're going into web development, then um, you should try your best to start in web development. But if you wanna be an email developer, of course, start in email development. Um, I, I just suddenly found myself in that role. It's not something I was looking to pursue, but I saw that I could apply my skills in HTML and CSS, so I went for it. But ultimately, I was like, no, I want to stick to the web side of things. But you do have options. Take a look at the spreadsheet that I created that lists entry level jobs. So you can see that more than just email development allows you to apply HTML, CSS skills and whatever other front end skills that you have. So you don't have to spend all this time learning about email development if really what you want to do is do web development. Um, next question. Can we be friends? Who are you? Next question is from, I'm gonna say Jallo. Hey, I just starting to code and I'm already interested in email development. I was wondering, do I only need HTML and CSS or do I have to learn JavaScript and other languages? I like your videos because they're easy to understand. Can you please do a list of things I would need in my journey? And for some companies, no, as far as needing to learn anything outside of HTML and CSS. And for some companies, yes, they require lots of other stuff. It just depends on where you go, where you're looking. So as far as is a list of things you would need let me tell you what I do so one good thing you could do is I said in another question um, you can go to a job posting site indeed.com is my favorite website for that um, type in email developer go through the job postings and see what they're looking for so as you can see this company Ragnarok they look for what HTML, CSS, proficiency with JSON, know what an API is, understand how a data feed works, blah, blah, blah. Web developer email, they're looking for HTML, and CSS. So that's one that looks for that. Senior web email developer, they are looking for five years of experience with HTML emails, HTML, CSS, email testing, bachelor's degree, Photoshop. Here's another one. They prefer you have marketing automation and email marketing occupations. You need to be able to develop and test, debug HTML templates and web pages. So looks like HTML is the main thing that they look for i don't see and i may be missing it but i don't really see any other languages here they do prefer a bachelor's on that one so this is the best thing you can do because nobody knows what every company would require another thing you can do is make a list um, as you go through the job postings make a list of what companies look for in html email developers and keep that list and that way you'll know for yourself this is what companies are typically looking for. And looks like most of the time they're looking for HTML, CSS. Some companies look for more. So you can make a list of what they typically look for and figure out what's worth pursuing to you. If you feel that everything on this list is worth learning to become an HTML email developer, you should learn it. But don't just learn stuff for one company. Learn it because you really enjoy it. Because there are other jobs out here outside of HTML email development that would be happy to just have your HTML CSS skills. So you want to focus on what you really enjoy and then find companies that focus on that too. Your happiness is important too. The next question is from Viral World. Can you please create live HTML emails so we can also learn how to do this? So I won't be focusing on that kind of content. It just so happens email uh, the email development video is my most popular one. but. I'm 100% focused on the web and bettering my skills there. I got experience in email development, but I won't ever return to that. I'm glad I know how to do it, but I'm just not gonna focus on it. However, I'm gonna give you the resources that I recommend for email development. Coding Phase has a course on email development. And from what I've seen, there's a lot of success stories, so I recommend that. I recommend Ivan Hurt here on YouTube. He focuses solely on email development. And then W3 Newbie, I did uh, one of their courses. Before I started my job, I just wanted to build an email just to get a, a better feel for it. The course was pretty much 
almost to the T what I did at work every day. So I recommend that. So Coding Phase, Ivan Hurt, and W3 Newbie are three work resources that moving forward, I'm gonna recommend people go to because they actually focus on that kind of content. Next question, this is from Instagram. Okay, so I'm currently learning email development, but there are so many YouTube videos with many different methods of doing so that I'm not sure if I'm learning the right way. Do you know where I should learn email development? Is there a specific place you learned? I didn't learn email development anywhere. I only learned email development for that particular job. The videos that helped me, the one that I mentioned in the previous comment, W3 Newbie, this is literally almost exactly what I did in my job when I was working as an email developer. I'm gonna leave these resources in the description as well that I mentioned in the previous question, and that way they'll be here in this video. But it was just about knowing HTML, CSS, but not necessarily email development because they trained me on that process. As long as I could apply my HTML and CSS skills, the email development process you can learn that. Next question is from Jesse Allen. When I apply for email developer positions, I see that they have Salesforce as a requirement or preferred. Is Salesforce something I should learn in email development? So that depends and it's always gonna depend on the company. If you really wanna work there, then you should learn it. Otherwise, find a company that doesn't require it. I don't think it's a good idea to learn something just for a company unless you already work there since there's no guarantee that they'll hire you. Another question from Panda Pete. And I told you guys, lots of email development questions. For future email development questions, I'm pretty much gonna send people here to this video because these are the pretty much the same questions I get over and over. So that's one reason I wanted to create this video so that there's just one central video for people to come to. So anyways, can you please share with us the general workflow as an email developer from planning to deployment? Basically, the tickets will come in from project managers and we would take ownership of those tickets. And I also made a video about this too. What I do as an email developer, it probably wasn't too in depth on, on this whole process, but I also made a video day in the life of a developer. So that can kind of complement this question as well, the answer to this question. But once I take ownership of a ticket, it goes through four phases and all four phases are handled by the developer who took ownership of the original project. So the first process is asset review. So we make sure all the attached images images are good, uh, make sure the design can be done, that is feasible, and that we can move forward with the project. The next is the actual build, we call it a new build. So we would code it out, the fonts, colors, overall design, put in all images, and make sure it's pixel perfect according to our standards, the client standards, etc. And so we send that off to the client and then whatever edits they want to make, they just let us know. So they request edits like it could be spelling, it could be related to fonts, colors, anything they want to change, they can change it through the edit round. And then finally, there's deployment. So this is the preparation we did to so that it can be used by the client. I never saw that part of it. I just did a few little things in the systems that we used. All I did was pretty much build them. So anything that happens after it leaves development, I've never seen anything I built live and in action. So, <laughs> but it's wash, rinse and repeat from there. And that process just every day, tickets, asset review, new build, edits, deployment. So hopefully the answers solve some of the mystery behind everything that was asked here. I think that question answer sessions through live streams are gonna be best moving forward on this channel because maybe it's easier if I start doing live streams and that way people can pop in and I can answer questions live. So that's something I, I definitely wanna get into more here in the channel. So we got some great things happening on the channel. Thank you for all of your questions. I wish everybody the best of luck in their career journey, no matter what you're doing in tech and web and coding. And see you all in the next one.